Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a video, and I am up here in the auditorium, but this is not a View from the Pew video per se. I don't know if I'll even put it under View from the Pew, but what I want to say is I've got five questions that I want you to ask about pretty well everything you hear, okay? Five questions to ask about everything. Now, the reason I'm giving you these five questions to ask is because I hear a lot of stuff, and I'm sure you hear a lot of stuff, and sometimes I hear it and I'm forced to wonder, is that really true? You know, did, ha, you know, this is a pretty incredible fact or, or tidbit. And, and where, where did that come from? Not that long ago, I heard someone say, well, you know, scientists theorize that there might be another planet just outside of our solar system that's actually part of our solar system that's bigger than Jupiter. And I thought, wow, that's pretty amazing. But, my, but then I was like, how do I verify something like that, right? Now, of course, it turns out there is a theory along those lines, and a theory is just that, a theory, because it, it has yet to be verified. But that statement is largely what, what has prompted me to make this video, okay? So here are five questions to ask whenever you hear anything. And the questions are, number one, who said it? All right, now what I mean by this, by the way, I want to warn you, don't be offensive when you ask these questions. Be kind, be gentle with people. Try to investigate together to come to a better conclusion uh, and arrive to, a, to an idea that's closer to the truth. But, so here are the questions. Number one, who said that? All right, are they an expert? You know, do they have some special life experience that I don't have or you don't have? Uh, have they done this thousands of times before and that's why they know? Or, or is, is it, you know, is it a piece of car advice? Were they, were they a mechanic? Is it a piece of medical advice? Were they a doctor? Okay. And so who said it? What are their credentials? What background in history do they have that, that gives them credibility to say a certain thing? So that's the number one question. Who said that? All right. Number two is to ask, okay, why did they say it? Right? Uh, you know, and this is, this is one of those things that becomes more important than ever, especially in an internet age, because it's easy to share something that's 144 characters, you know, on Twitter that comes out of a 2,000 page book. And, and sometimes what's in the other 99.99% of a document doesn't fit well with that one quote that you read on Facebook, okay? So ask, why did that person say it? What were they commenting on? What had just happened, you know, in what context? And I, I've had this experience, and probably so have you. I've had someone share a quote with me, or I've read a quote somewhere, and then when I went to look up the original document where the quote was taken from, it turns out that the quote was completely used out of context. Okay, so ask the next question. After you say who said it, then ask why. Why did they say that? What were they talking about? What, what were the conditions surrounding that statement? Okay, so number one, who said it? Number two was why did they say it? Number three, where did they get their information? Okay, number three, where did they get their information? Now, one of the ways that, one of the things that you hear an awful lot, and I mean an awful lot today, is this sentence, okay? Before almost anything that anyone wants you to believe, they're going to say, you know, recent studies have shown, okay? And then they're going to say whatever they want to say, all right? So, you need to ask, when someone says recent studies have shown, you need to say what study? Who conducted the study? How big was the sample size? Okay, what were the actual numbers of the study? You know, did they, did they do a study of, of 100 people and 51 of them, you know, had this result? And so they're saying study shows that this is true? Okay, and so you need to, you know, just because a study was done doesn't necessarily mean anything. And I don't know about you, but I watch, I like to watch shows, you know, on Discovery Channel and different uh, sources like that, National Geographic. And often uh, those sources are pretty good to say, hey, a, a recent study has been published indicating this. But two or three years ago, another study came out saying pretty much the exact opposite thing. Okay, so you need to be aware when someone says, recent studies have shown. You need to ask, what was the study? What was it about? Are there conflicting studies out there? Are you sure you're getting uh, a full, accurate picture of uh, what's being said here? Now, not only studies, but a recent discovery is another famous one, you know. Recent discoveries indicate that, okay? Fill in the blank. Well, again, you need to ask, okay, what was the experiment that was done? Who made the discovery? You know, if it was a if it was a historical discovery, a piece of archaeology, you need to say, what are the details? 
All right, I've I've seen um, I've seen claims where you know ancient human remains were found. All right, well it turns out it was like the the tip of a pinky bone, and that was all the ancient human remains they had, and they were drawing all kinds of crazy conclusions from that, and you're like, well, you know, I don't know if you're legitimate in, in going to those lengths with nothing more than a pinky bone, okay? Now, so you need to ask, where did they get the information from? And you need to ask some intelligent questions about where that information came from. It was a study, if it was an experiment, has it been verified, Have has it been peer-reviewed, okay? Uh, number four, what interpretation was done to that data? All right, so now you've asked the question, who said it? Why did they say it? Where did they get their information? Now you want to ask, how did they interpret the information? Why did they interpret it the way that they did? Okay, it, it, this is one of those things where every scientist wants their discovery to be headline news. And sometimes because of that desire, they'll interpret it a certain way rather than another way so that it, it seems more significant. Okay, so, so ask how was this data interpreted and who did the interpretation and what agenda or what biases may they have had or may they not have that are going to influence what they're going to do with this data. Okay, one last question and that is to ask what branch of science are we considering here? Okay, what branch of investigation are we talking about? You know, if it's, a, if it's a statement about your car, well then this is an engineering question and generally engineering questions are pretty straightforward. But if it's about raising children, now it's a question of psychology and psychiatry and anthropology and biology. And there are way more factors to be considered and there's a much greater margin for error. Okay, so ask yourself those five questions. Who said it? You know, what are their credentials? Why did they say that? What was the context? What was the point in history that they said it? Where did they get their information from? Was it a study? Was it an experiment? Is it just their opinion that they pull out of the sky? What kind of interpretation was done to that data? And finally, what branch of science are we talking about here? Is it a very hard, concrete science? Or is it a fairly theoretical science? Okay. And if you ask all those five questions, you'll find that, number one, when people say something that's really incredible, you'll feel comfortable either accepting or questioning whatever they've said, because now you've got some, some filters to put it through, okay? Number two, when someone says something that seems like it's a little out to lunch, even if you don't know all the facts pertaining to the situation, if you ask those five questions, you'll have a pretty good chance of identifying whether or not they're totally out to lunch, okay? So I hope that video was helpful to you. I would strongly encourage you to start asking those five questions about things that you hear, things that you read, things that you see on TV, even statements that your friends make to you over coffee. And if you do that, you'll find that some things are extremely reliable. And you'll go, hey, that's awesome, and that's really interesting information. And other things you'll find out, hey, turns out that's not as set in stone as maybe I thought before. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll talk to you soon.